what is important to know about convergence of integrals? This is what I would call continuity. Think about integration as a linear functional. Is it continuous linear functional? And if it is, in what sense? And uh, the continuity, what we hope for is that we would like to bring limit inside the integral. That would be the continuity of integration. The answer in general is no. Integration is not continuous in full generality. But there are cases where with some restrictions we get continuity. In the lecture notes you can read there are examples when of discontinuity where discontinuity does not hold. They are important things so if you have time it would be very good if you could have a look at this ex uh, exercise um, 7.3. Then uh, there are two famous um, theorems called Lebesgue's monotone convergence theorem and Lebesgue's dominated convergence theorem. These are the famous theorems um, that kind of, um, I think you should know what they say, but um, maybe it's not so important that you, you can repeat the proof. I will not ask them in the exam. There are some other versions of these so different variants of these conditions and, and if you want to do upper or lower limits or something, so that's called what's called FATU here. But uh, let's not worry about this is actually used for, to prove one of the, the one of the key theorems. So the so-called dominated convergence theorem is here. Let's read the statement. It says we have a sequence of functions which are measurable functions and the key thing is that we are searching for an upper bound, G. We assume that we have a one function which is upper bounding in this sense that it's bounding all the other functions from above. And we assume that the upper bound is integrable so that this upper bound is uh, integrates into a finite number. If you have these conditions, then you get what you want. You can bring in the limb inside the integral. So f is the limb here. So you can bring, change the limit and the integral. This is the famous theorem that works when you use the definition of Lebesgue integration. It doesn't work with the Riemann integral concept. So that's one of the main reasons why in mathematics, in probability in analysis, we like to use Lebesgue integration because we have a kind of a nice condition, clean condition, clean theorem telling when we can change the integral and the, and the limit. Here it is, that's called dominated convergence. And we need to find a function G which is dominating uh, our sequence of functions Fn to do this. The proof is not complicated. It's based on Fatou's lemma and then these this previous two pages. So they are kind of, you could think Fatou is kind of a, one step of the proof in a way. And then, then a special case of dominated convergence theorem is called bounded convergence theorem. So for probabilities, if you have a bounded sequence of random variables, then for probabilities, you get what you want. And that's, um, that's the bounded convergence theorem. And then let's see, was there something which we skipped? So it's a skipped here. It's 7.10, so we should go there. The other important theorem is called monotone convergence theorem. And that's 7.10 in the lecture notes. This is now in the domain. The previous one was in the domain of, of L1 functions. That's where the dominated convergence plays a role. But remember, we look at the integrals and expectations in two cases, L1 cases and non-negative cases where we allow in infinities. The monotone convergence theorem relates to general non-negative measurable functions, which can take infinite values as well. We assume that there's a monotone limit, that we have functions which increase to a limiting function. The monotone convergence theorem tells that if you have an increasing limit of functions, then the integrals increase also to where you like. So you can change the limit and the integral also in this setting. And what is on the left, what is on the right, both of these things can be finite or infinite. 
infinities are allowed in the monotone convergence set. The proof of this theorem is in the appendix and actually essentially we already did the proof in the previous lecture. We did the simple function approximation which was increasing to a limiting function and when working with the definition of the integral we needed to actually already do this approximation. So in some sense the monotone convergence theorem is just a kind of a, it's equivalent to the definition of the integral. We define this integral using approximations of this form. The only addition that is in this theorem is that in the approximation theorem we assume that these fn's we assume these to be simple functions. The only tiny extension to do is that you can also have non-simple positive measurable functions which are approximating and the, the same approximation remains true. This is the key thing about monotone convergence theorem. I wonder if you might have something in mind that you might like to ask right now. Let me let me maybe hear your voice. Does this no, look I assume this can be also applied to sum since sum is a special case of the Lebesgue integral. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, this was one of the topics when I mentioned that for this week uh, the lecture notes was were a bit heavy on the topic. So. But this is actually so important that um, let's write it maybe right here about this question. Yes. So what about a sum k from one to infinity f and k? If we assume that we have now functions or, or well, they are functions on the integers and assume that these functions f and increase to some limit f again and uh, everything is non-negative in this picture. So then um, the claim is that the limb when n goes to infinity of this sum is equal to the sum of the limb. where n goes to infinity. This is, a, in a way, we could think this is a corollary of the monotone convergence theorem, an extremely important corollary. And what is this actually? How do you prove this is that um, <clears throat> we just need to recognize that this sum is actually, this sum here, all, the, all sums are actually Lebesgue integrals. So, this sum is a Lebesgue integral. It is the integral of fn d mu for a certain well-chosen mu. And I think in the lecture notes it's called mu hash. And mu hash is defined as the counting measure. So the mu hash of a set A is the number of points in A. So it's the counting, counting measure. So when you recognize that uh, actually any sum finite or infinite is a Lebesgue integral also for a suitable measure. So then we use, for this measure, we use the monotone convergence theorem and we get what we want. 